Hi Gathering here and welcome to the workshop. There have been lots of questions about tubeless tires. So instead of replying uh, all of them individually, I decided uh, to create this uh, installment and show you everything I know about tubeless tires and setups for road bikes specifically. Now this list or knowledge is of course not exhaustive. I haven't tested obviously every tire and rim combination or product uh, in on the market but still I think I have quite a lot of experience now what I'd like to point out is that unlike road bikes tubeless systems for mountain bikes have been around for a while and uh, I would say at this point they're so refined that uh, they're downright easy to set up uh, not so easy though with the road bikes because uh, there's less tire volume, air volume, uh, there are higher pressures involved. Usually there's also braking surfaces uh, in play with rim brakes. So it's nearly not as easy. If you want uh, to debate about tubular versus clincher versus tubeless, each have their advantages and downfalls. Tubulars are slow, messy, but they are safe and they have good road feel if I sum it up this way and they are light as a system great for cyclocross for me no real other use clinchers are the easiest to set up can be fast with latex tubes uh, but the tubeless uh, setup gives you basically the best puncture protection uh, if it's set up correctly then also the, the easiest or lifespan because uh, you don't have to worry about uh, cubes or pinch flats or etc. And it's also the fastest option if you choose the correct tire. So, uh, each tubeless setup uh, for a road bike has a couple of different components. So, and I'm going to talk about each of them individually. So, it's the wheel itself, the sealant, the valve, the tire of course, the tape and the tools uh that you install them with so let's start uh with the wheel now as i said with mountain bike wheels it's quite easy you can pretty much take every mountain bike wheel today and convert it to, to tubeless uh, whether it is actually compatible or not because of the nature of high pressure road bike tires uh, this isn't really the issue so as a rule of thumb if uh, road wheel is not specifically designed to be tubeless compatible it will never be uh, maybe you can assemble it but it will never be 100% safe one notable except exemption under this uh, are the head wheels uh, namely the jet jet plus and jet black series which use the otherwise tubeless ready handmade hub or sorry rim uh, that you find in the Ardennes uh, wheel line, completely tubeless ready. The downfall is that MV, or sorry, the head wheels don't use structural carbon. They have just these carbon fairings that are quite flimsy. So they claim it's not the safest to use them, but it's possible to set up, possible to tape up. They work perfectly fine. Other exemptions, I don't really know, but there are, uh, nowadays there are tons of tubeless ready options out there particularly for disc brakes so no real issue finding them uh, so that's the wheel cover this in particular is a MV SES 5.6 disc pretty modern rim tubeless ready uh, with a hooked design uh, not made in the newest Etro standards though uh, some wheels also use uh, hookless designs again like mountain bikes uh, which creates some advantages and some issues, but we'll get to that later. So we have the wheels covered pretty much uh, Then the tires The choice here is very simple unlike aerodynamics. It's quite easy to measure the performance of the tire uh, There is a very good website for this bicyclerollingresistance.com where they measure the rolling resistance of basically each major release or tire from major manufacturer 
and they rank them in different aspects. Uh, as the market currently stands, you should be interested in these three options. So let's start with the middle one. Uh, this is the Corsa Speed uh, Graphene 2.0 tire. Uh, this is the fastest tire in the world, discounting some track tubulars. It's a, a super light, time trial specific tire, no puncture protection, only coming from the sealant. If there is some, uh, not extremely grippy, not super durable, but super fast. The fastest tire in the world, as I said. Uh, what is it good for? Mm, time trials, triathlons. That's pretty much it. Even specific tire, not really good for all around use. Uh, if you want a tire for all around use, then uh, if your tires or sorry, your wheels can fit this tire, your second best option or second fastest option, should I say, and the best option for all around use is uh, the Conti GP5000 TL. This is an all around. A race tire for road bikes. Uh, it has good puncture protection, uh, decent grip, not the grippiest tire in the world, but decent grip, uh, very sturdy, long lasting, and super fast. Actually, uh, in the comparison, it's just a couple of percent slower than the course of speed. So, if you want a uh, very good speed with a bit more reliability and grip, then the GP5000 TL is your best option. However, there is a catch in this. This tire is uh, super tight on some rim combinations and also it's not compatible with uh, hookless rims as I mentioned previously, they are becoming quite popular so it's not compatible with some of those wheels. If you have one of those, then in my book uh, the choice is the Schwalbe Pro 1. It's a bit lighter than the Conti, a bit grippier and uh, a good chunk slower actually, a couple of watts, but uh, again it's uh, in most cases easier to fit and uh, it's still a very good all-around tire but you get a bit of a speed or rolling resistance uh, penalty in there. Okay, uh, those are the tires covered, we can continue on valves, uh, basically most manufacturers of wheels include their own valves uh, with, the, with the wheels or the rims, there are two general types, so some of them use more of a rim bed specific design like this valve comes from an envy rim. And the reason for that is that MV rims use a very deep internal channel and a very heavily sculpted one. So I've only managed to fit them with their own valves. Uh, or that's the easiest uh, solution. And then there are these uh, valves with a conical rubber bung. These work with pretty much uh, every type of rim out there. Very reliable. So if you go for this shape, should be no problem. So that's uh, quite of an easy choice. Then if you go further uh, to rim tape, the important thing about rim tape in road bike tubeless systems is that you must use two layers, two complete wraps because of the pressure that I mentioned before. There is high pressure, so you don't want that to pierce uh, the tape on you. So I have this Vittoria one quite decent. Uh, the qualities you're looking for in the rim tape is flexibility, so how well can it conform to the shape of the uh, inside of the rim, uh, how sticky the uh, glue is and how tough it is to pierce or well, split when installing it. Uh, this uh, yellow Tessa tape also a good option, pretty cheap. If you have a uh, rim that's very wide or has a very uh, deep internal channel or uh, complex shaping in there then uh, standard Gorilla Tape also works well, it has a super strong adhesive and it's very very conformable so also a very nice option. Again 
my experience comes uh, mostly from MV rims. As I said, these have a very, very deep and sculpted channel in there. And even with these tapes, with the yellow tape, for example, or this Vittoria one, you struggle to tape them up properly. With Gorilla tape, it's okay. But the best, and by far, I would say, yeah, just the best all around rim tape is the red one included with the MV wheels. I couldn't really get my hands on this outside of MV, so I don't know what it is actually. Uh, it's super sticky, super conformable, super easy to install. It's the best all around, even with that deep channel in there, it just fits and sticks perfectly by itself, no real corrections needed. So, best of the best, but I have yet to find out where to get this separately. Uh, then we have another component, which is sealant. Now, bear in mind, most of these road systems are so-called tubeless ready, which means that uh, they need sealant to seal and work properly. Some combinations might work without it, but then you also lose the puncture protection. Uh, also, one thing to note, uh, the less sealant you use, the less rolling resistance you will have and the less puncture protection you will have. So that's up for you to decide. I generally uh, use around 20 to 30 millimeter, milliliters, but it varies tire by tire. Uh, if I go back to my examples, Schwalbe's need very little to seal nicely, Conti's need nothing to very little to seal nicely. Uh, but the course speed is a very thin, very porous tires. There are some porosities in there. So for the initial fitting, I fit around 40 to 50 milliliters of sealant. Then I do one ride where it seals up those little imperfections in the tire. And then I pull the extra sealant out and leave in just around 20 milliliters or even less for the lowest possible rolling resistance. So that's my tip uh, there. Which sealant to use? I have been using the standard Stans sealant, which is a, a gold staple. It just works. I've been experimenting with other ones, but I have yet to reach a final conclusion. So I have yet, yet to try Victoria's Pit Stop, uh, although it seems very similar to the Stans uh, sealant. Then we have this finish line sealant, which supposedly never dries out. Um, it's not really true, but it lasts much longer than other sealants. But on the flip side, it's very dense and it doesn't seal uh, as quickly or as well. Uh, then recently, uh, as you know, I work a lot with SRAM and my SRAM distributor started importing also the milk kit systems and products. They specialize in tubeless. Uh, products, so I started using their sealant as well, and so far it's holding up very nicely. It's set to last longer than stands and also seal better, but I have yet to try this out. Actually, I never got a puncture with the road tubeless system, so hard for me to actually comment on this. But on the mountain bike, it works like a charm. Okay, so these are the components of the actual uh, wheel and tire system, but as I mentioned, it might not always be the easiest uh, to fit them. So what do I use for that? Well, firstly, you have to get uh, the tire on the rim. For this, I use my trusty Crank Brothers uh, pliers or tire levers. Uh, these are all plastic, no metal insert, but they're quite tough. They are flexing a little bit if your uh, tire is very tight, but I never managed to break them, so I'm very happy with them. Even the toughest combinations were quite okay to fit with these. So I'm happy with this investment. Uh, then fitting the sealant uh, through the valve. You can use something just like this. So a little piece of straw put in this little container. This is what comes with the stands sealant and then well, you can actually use it as a syringe. You just put it in the bottle. When it, oh, sorry, when it's squeezed like that, then you take it and you can suck it up like this. So not as practical as a syringe. Again, I got this from Milkit. I have yet to try it. I just got it today. 
but this is probably the easiest solution because here you can precisely measure it uh, and pull it in and out as needed and then as far as inflation goes some reviewers mention if the tire uh, is possible to fit with just a standard floor pump uh, at the beginning I was trying to test that as well but really for me there is no point because re uh, really I had zero success uh, with road bike wheels and tires in this regard so I just stopped I used the compressor straight away sometimes it doesn't work even with the compressor and then I pick out uh, the tire booster I got this from Schwalbe and it just works it you pump it up to um, 140 60 psi and just pop it on there and the tires uh, seat into place and afterwards you are good to go okay so uh, this is as much knowledge as i can share with you about road tubeless tires and systems if you want to know more about other aspects of my bike setups then don't forget to tune into the channel and subscribe. It's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.